Hi everyone, uh, I'm Chris. I'm speaking today about building uh, React primitives to power in-app messaging. Um, so I'm the CTO at NOC. Um, just a quick introduction to what NOC is in case you haven't seen our videos outside. Uh, we help product teams power user-centric cross-channel notification experiences. So think about things like sending emails, push, SMS, Slack, all those kind of good things. Uh, but we also power in-app experiences as well for things like notification feeds. So um, I'm sure a bunch of you in this room and beyond have uh, actually used Vercel. So one fun fact about Knock is that we power all of Vercel's uh, in-app and emails. So if you've ever failed a build on Vercel, those notifications come via Knock. So this is a really good example of the kind of in-app experience that you can currently build uh, with the Knock platform, which is basically uh, we power all of the back end, uh, the real-time service, and then we give a React library and a bunch of hooks so that you can actually build your own UI on top of it. But today, what I want to talk to you about is how we've been extending the abilities of our in-app messaging way past uh, actually just doing those kind of notification feeds. So what we're doing today is actually uh, bringing the ability so that you can power any kind of in-app messaging, whether that be you know, maybe it's a modal or a banner or like a toast that pops up to your users. And all of that is mapped to components that you own and that you introduce into your, uh, into your code base. Um, Knock powers the data layer when we're doing that. Uh, and you actually get the benefit of our real-time uh, in-app infrastructure that currently handles millions of users across billions of API requests. So lots of scale. Um, but what I want to talk about today is a bit about how we actually approach the SDK updates for introducing these changes. Um, so we actually set out with some design principles about how we would introduce this. So we really wanted to make sure that we are optimizing for flexibility around use cases. So thinking about customers who are using these pre-built out-of-the-box components, but also people who are coming and building custom components on top of what we're providing, all the way through to shocker for this room, people who are using other Vue frameworks that aren't React, and maybe they need to bind in and do something inside of Vue or Svelte or something else like that. Um, we also wanted to make sure that everything is super customizable. So if you're using our out-of-the-box components just as they come, you can override all of the styling and, and bring your own kind of design system and set of uh, styles to it. And then lastly, we wanted this kind of shallow learning curve. So making it really easy for folks to get started uh, with the components that we provide. So it's the minimal amount of changes within your code base to get up and running with these pre-built out-of-the-box components. Um, so here's a bit about how we approached our design. So at the bottom, this isn't uh, this slide is not a stack, but if you kind of imagine it as a bit more of a stack, this makes more sense. At the bottom, we have our low-lying SDK, which is our client SDK. Um, that is a low-level wrapper that actually exposes plain JavaScript classes uh, and then manages all of the kind of business logic associated with in-app messaging. When should that message show? Who should it show to? Um, marking it as red, things like that. Um, that's backed by a store that we actually use Tanstack store for, uh, which, is, which is fantastic because it gives us this kind of cross-view uh, platform uh, ability to bind into these state updates. So really, really neat. Uh, and then next, we actually expose a set of hooks that make use of that low-level uh, client. Uh, and that's what our React libraries can consume. So you know, those hooks make everything nicely Reactified, makes it really easy to bind to that state store so you can receive these updates. And then finally, at the top of the stack is a set of out-of-the-box components that we provide. So those are built on top of Radix UI, um, the primitives that it provides. Um, make sure that we have a nice set of accessible components out of the gate. Uh, and then we also deliver these kind of smart and dumb components. The smart component binds to our hooks, provides all the functionality, and these dumb components are more of the view layer where, whereby folks can come in and maybe you want to use our modal, but you want to override the way that the button works or some other facet of the modal, and you can do so. Um, and then everything inside of here, uh, you can actually update the CSS variables. All the classes can be overridden, so it's really easy to kind of match it to whatever uh, styling that you have within your product. 
Cool, so here's a little look at what our pre-built React components look like. Um, so we provide a banner, a modal, a card, um, this notification feed as well. All of this comes out of the box. It all supports light mode and dark mode as well. So this is a really good example of, you know, you just want to get started really easily. You want to show your users uh, a modal when something happens, or maybe you've got a new product announcement that you want to showcase to a subset of your users, something more like that. Um, Here's what this looks like in the actual code that we were able to produce. So what you can see here is we have a couple of providers that we're injecting into our application. Then we're adding our banner component. Um, all of that just works right now. So when the user receives a banner within uh, as a message, a banner will just display in their application with no additional code for them to write. So really easy. And again, this is all in your code base. If you contrast that to the tools that exist already, most of those tools are sending down HTML over the wire that's kind of been injected into your view layer. Uh, with this approach, you're actually owning the components that are rendered to make sure that your team can think about performance and optimizations and things like that. And then if you want to build a custom component, so think about like something that's, you know, that we don't offer out of the box or something more bespoke to your product's needs, this is a kind of uh, example of the minimal set of code you need to do so. So here you can see we're using our hook. The hook basically makes sure that we're fetching all the data, dealing with real-time updates, everything of that nature. Uh, and then what we can even do here is actually type the contents of the message as well. And on the knock side, we provide a schema that can change over time so that your team can make sure that there's a strong guarantee between this component and the data that's actually coming from the server as well. Cool. Um, so that's a really brief overview of what we're doing with in-app messaging. Um, thank you very much. You can see more at knock.app or we're over on the booth if you want to talk about more than just in-app messaging and notifications in general as well. Cool. Thank you. Woo!